Number 9. Alexander Krylov Alexander Krylov was a Russian career politician who served as a member of the Yakutia State Assembly. But in late 2019, he made headlines for reasons other than politics when he died during a hunting excursion in Siberia's Omiyakon district. A bear dashed out into the road while Krylov was riding an ATV, so he pulled out his gun and shot it dead. He stopped the vehicle and went to examine the creature's body up close, at which point another bear emerged from the nearby woods and attacked Krylov. Within seconds, he was dead. Some call it karma when hunters become the hunted, while others chalk it up to the bad luck or the unfortunate risk that comes along with the sport. On the other hand, the hunting community tends to remember its fallen members in a legendary way, as dedicated sportsmen who lost their lives doing what they truly love. Number 8. Man vs. Mama Bear While out boar hunting in southwestern France recently, a senior citizen came face to face with an angry mother bear. The protective parent was out and about with her cubs when she bit the 70-year-old several times, seriously injuring his legs and damaging some of his arteries. Using the rifle, the man shot the bear twice, killing her instantly. Fellow hunters heard her calls for help and rushed to the scene, where they managed to slow the bleeding until help arrived. The hunter was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The incident highlighted long-held concerns surrounding the decisions to reintroduce brown bears to Pyrenees Mountains after numbers plummeted during the 1990s. Local farmers opposed the move, arguing that bears threatened their livestock, but officials went ahead with the plan. The decision hasn't been accepted with open arms and has even sparked protests among those who think it was a bad move. Describing the coexistence of humans and bears as complicated, a local council official told press agency AFP that attacks like this are what we feared when the animals were reintroduced to the area. On the other hand, animal rights activists caution against blaming the bears, pointing out that people are invading their territory, not the other way around. It's a complicated issue seen in many parts of the world as human populations grow, and the solutions to it are anything but cut and dry. Number 7. Captured on Camera A man in Essex County, England, recently killed a fox with a pitchfork after prying the animal out of his dog's mouth. The fox bit at the fork in a desperate attempt to save his own life, while the man repeatedly stabbed him with the gardening tool, but the creature eventually stopped moving. The 48-year-old man didn't realize that the whole ordeal was captured on camera, courtesy of the Hunt Saboteurs Association a non-profit dedicated to saving wild animals throughout the UK. Disturbing footage shows the suspect torturing the fox to death before nonchalantly picking up the animal's lifeless body and walking away. The organization turned the video over to law enforcement, who arrested the man on suspicion of violating the country's hunting and animal welfare acts. Hunt Saboteurs Association spokesperson Lee Moon described the incident as some of the worst abuse the animal rights organization has ever witnessed. He explained that even though some people believe that England's fox population is out of control, culling should only ever be done humanely and with proper equipment. Moon also pointed out that while most people would understandably be horrified by the footage, the calm and methodical manner in which the man kills the fox shows that his behavior is commonplace. In other words, it speaks volumes that the gruesome act he committed didn't seem to face him. According to activists, incidents like this reveal hidden truths about what really goes on in the hunting world. But many hunting enthusiasts openly condemn animal torture, abuse, and pretty much anything that doesn't constitute a quick, painless kill. And they argue that a man like this is not a welcome member of their community. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Number 6. Safari Disaster Scott Van Zeel was 44 years old when he disappeared in 2017 during a hunting safari with friends in South Africa. His fellow hunters became concerned when his dogs returned to camp without him. They traced Van Seal's trail to the Limpopo River where they found his backpack near the water. Based on the evidence, they suspected that the worst had happened and that their friend had been killed and possibly eaten by Nile crocodiles. The group obtained permission to shoot and kill three of the reptiles one of which was found to contain human remains. DNA tests confirmed the following week that the remains belonged to Van Zeel. His death came amid a steady rise in deadly crocodile attacks in the region, which had resulted in four deaths already that year. Nile crocodiles are notorious for their aggressive nature. They also tend to live closer to humans than other crocodilian species, 
which are known for being at least slightly tamer. Their jaws are so powerful that even large animals like wildebeests and buffalo rarely manage to escape their grasp. The species is responsible for as many as 1,000 human deaths every year. In most cases, the creatures either drown their victims or rip them to shreds. Number five, a life-changing ordeal. In 2016, Lee Brooks' life changed forever in a split second while he was out hunting in the mountains of Wyoming. An angry female grizzly bear attacked him seemingly out of nowhere, knocking the man unconscious as he approached an elk he had just killed. The animal was still there when he came to, and she wasn't yet finished with what she had started. Lee scrambled for his knife as the 420-pound beast crushed his body and ripped his face to shreds. He managed to stab the bear a few times, despite not being able to see because his eyes were filled with blood. The animal fled the scene, and Lee spent the next hour desperately screaming for help until his friends found him. He took his nose and upper lip, which were completely ripped off, and stuffed them in his pocket as he awaited rescue by helicopter. There was only one place to take Lee, to a medical school that specialized in reconstructive surgery. Almost every bone in his face was damaged. Doctors put the ailing man in a medically induced coma while they started the painstaking process of rebuilding his face and body. They used pieces of Lee's leg bone to repair his facial structure and made a lip and mustache with his scalp. In a shocking move for the history books, the team attached his severed nose to his arm with plans to eventually sew it back onto his face. Lee stayed in a coma for a month while he underwent dozens of surgeries. The reconstructive work is ongoing. His nose has been reattached to his face, and while it's pretty obvious that he was injured, his improvement has been nothing short of remarkable. Number four, an impromptu wrestling match. When Shauna Hoekstra saw a deer struggling to walk and falling over in a cornfield outside her Alto, Michigan home in 2015, she saw it as an opportunity to harvest some meat to feed her family with. She made her way over to the ailing 10-point buck with a machete in hand, just in case it wasn't dead yet. Much to Shauna's surprise, the deer lunged at her as she approached. She grabbed its antlers, wrestled the animal to the ground, and got on top of him in what she described to MLive.com as one solid move, but she was afraid to get off the deer because it would give him another opportunity to attack her. The pair remained interlocked for a good 30 to 40 minutes as they struggled against one another. Finally, Shauna's father arrived at the scene. He knew that she had gone outside to collect the deer for its meat and became worried when she was gone for a long time. The concerned dad called 911 while Shauna continued to hold the buck to the ground. Once police arrived, they put the animal down. Shauna wasn't hurt, but she was definitely shaken from the ordeal. I mean, who wouldn't be? But she calmed down and her breathing returned to normal, so she declined medical treatment. And she was able to keep the deer for its meat, meaning her mission was accomplished, even if it took a bit longer than expected to get it done. Number three, a trophy hunting tragedy. An American trophy hunter made international headlines last year for allegedly killing a male lion who headed two prides in Zimbabwe's Uwange National Park. The 12-year-old big cat named Mopane repeatedly suffered for an entire day before he succumbed to his injuries. The hunter allegedly stalked the lion with the help of the same safari operator that sparked outrage against the world in 2015 for helping another American track and kill an iconic lion named Cecil. Mopane is said to have died near the same spot where Cecil was shot to death. Both of the killings triggered widespread anger amongst activists as the population at large increasingly disapproves of trophy hunting. More and more people seem to be condemning the practice as cruel and reflective of humanity at its worst. And when you think about how it works, it makes sense. Trophy hunters spend thousands of dollars to have a guide help them find and kill majestic animals that are often endangered. The person who killed Mopane reportedly lured the lion out of the park and into a game preserve, then shot him with an arrow. Mopane's death came the year after another male lion that he presided over a pride with was killed by a trophy hunter. The pride was left without a leader, leaving female lions and their cubs vulnerable to aggressive animals, who are known to sometimes kill members during the takeover process. Sadly, trophy hunting is not a crime in Zimbabwe, so the hunters who killed Mopane, Cecil, and others did not get in any legal trouble for their actions. But the court of public opinion certainly made its own judgment, 
dragging the killers into the spotlight in a rather undesirable way and reminding the trophy hunting community that the world is watching. Number two, a moody moose. British Columbia resident Bernie Berenger and his friend Joe were on their way home from a hunting day trip in 2013 when a mother moose and her calves caught their attention. The men spent several minutes following the family before they decided to continue toward home where their dinner was waiting. But the mother moose apparently didn't like their forwardness and she wasn't about to let the situation end peacefully. Video footage of the incident shows the displeased mama standing her ground as one of the hunters says, we just want to get by, lady. The hair on the back of her neck and shoulders stood up, and she charged at Bernie and Joe. They managed to narrowly avoid ending up in her path as she charged at them three more times. At one point, the angry moose hit her head on the bumper of the pair's truck. She ran at the vehicle one more time, smacking her chest and shoulder against it. The moose finally gave up and went away, leaving the two men unharmed and they were only a half an hour late to dinner. Moose are not aggressive by nature, but like any animal, they can become violent when they feel provoked or threatened. And this seems to happen quite often. For example, in Alaska, more people are injured by moose every year than by bears. The creatures are more likely to attack during mating season or when they have offspring to protect, which explains why this mother moose made it clear to Bernie and Joe that they were overstepping into her comfort zone. Even when a moose charges at a human, they're usually bluffing. In other words, it's a warning to the people to get away and give them some space before it gets ugly. These two hunters were lucky to walk away unscathed. And number one, a curious bite. 25-year-old deer hunter Dalton Roach was sitting in his deer stand recently in western Wisconsin when a curious black bear began climbing toward him. At first, the 300-pound creature wasn't acting out of the ordinary. In fact, it's not totally uncommon for a bear to go into a tree with a hunter, according to Roach, who spoke with ABC7 Chicago. But things took a strange turn when the animal decided to bite him in the back. Roach was wounded, but he knew better than to panic. He captured the nerve-wracking ordeal on camera. In hopes of scaring the bear away, he turned toward the creature and began shouting, telling it that it needed to leave. The bear hung around for another half hour before finally getting bored enough to wander elsewhere. Roach then made the quarter mile back to his truck while talking to a friend on the phone about what had just happened. He told ABC7 Chicago, in his own words, that he was honestly kind of laughing about it because it's one of the situations that obviously didn't happen every day. The perplexed hunter aired on the safe side and went to the emergency room for a rabies vaccine where he later said was more painful than the actual bite. A spokesperson for the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources said that bears tend to be skittish, so it helps to make a lot of noise while backing away in the event that someone crosses paths with one. The agency further explained that at that particular time of year, bears tend to be searching for food before they hibernate, and it reassured the public that attacks are rare. Since 2013, only four people have been hurt by bears in the state, and nobody has been killed. Thanks for watching. Do you have any crazy hunting stories you'd like to share with us? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.